There is a lot going on with building shoulder straps. First of all, you might look at this and think this is a short amount, but really seven to nine inches is the range you're looking at to make a shoulder strap. You just need it long enough that you can put the armor over your head. And so seven inches, six inches is for someone who has a tiny head and nine inches was, is someone who has a big melon. But you're not gonna need more than that because you still want the armor to ride pretty high up on your back and on your chest. That's the first. Second, notice where I'm starting with my stitching. I'm checking out about where I'm gonna put that pauldron connector. And the pauldron connector sits at the two thirds mark, not halfway. Uh, the distance from your back to the center of your shoulder is shorter from the set than the center of your shoulder to the front chest piece. So I always look for just like a two thirds mark. I always have it set back a little bit. Maybe even, a, you know, edge towards the one fourth mark. So that's why I'm starting there. Now I do have the connectors made so I can just stitch them straight in. I'm really just stitching down along the edge and there are extra holes on the connector pieces sometimes because there are two different plate styles I have. One's A plates and D plates and you need more holes if you're putting in the D plates. The leather connector pieces and the edging is going to keep the metal off of your gamison and off of your, your fighting tunic to keep that from wearing out or for any hard shots to be digging in. And using lamellar plates actually just gives you that slight bit of clavicle protection. Oh, this is the perfect example of what to do when your paracord isn't long enough. You don't have to unstitch everything. It's fine, it's fine. So I stitched up until I had an inch and a half left and I just got another piece of paracord and stitched in the rest. And I'll just finish them off like I usually finish them off, making little plastic blob rivets, uh, starting off with an inch and a half of paracord each. Putting trim on your lambler is good for keeping your gambeson or your under tunics from getting worn down a little bit and getting holes in them after a while. Not that the edges are sharp, but it just helps with a little bit of cushioning. Now the vertical pieces have little tabs in them on the top and bottom, and they're meant to fold underneath the horizontal pieces so you have a good continuous leather edging. And so you want to get that horizontal piece in place first, usually, and tuck that tab in. If I haven't mentioned it yet, it helps a lot if you wet this first. Get your leather nice and wet, soak it in water for 30 seconds to a minute. That makes it far more pliable and far easier to stitch. You know, usually start your stitches loose and come back through and tighten them up again later. But also, uh, if it's wet, when you're bending this in, it will form better around the edges of your lamp. And they're about done. I'm ready for my next piece of horizontal trim.